Welcome to the Solving Quadratic Equations lesson. So uh, today, what we're going to be doing is something similar to what we did last day. We're actually going to go through and find the roots, the x-intercepts, the uh, zeros. So be comfortable with all of those terms. They mean to find the same thing. So you're just going to go through and solve and, uh, and in the end get like if, it, if the variable is x, you're going to find the, all the x values that would work. Uh, in this equation here, for example, um, so that when I put the number in, it'll actually equal to zero. Uh, we're going to find all the w's here so that when I put it in um, and calculate it out, it'll all equal to zero. And then if we were to graph these, uh, we would find the um, those x values or the w values on the uh, x-axis, okay? And if we don't find any answers, that means that uh, the quadratic is you know, above the x-axis or below the x-axis, but it's not crossing the x-axis. All right, um, so um, we have learned um, about all these different forms for quadratics. Um, we started with the vertex form, so it looks like this, where um, you, know, you have one value of x uh, and a bracket squared. Um, and uh, yeah, like you know how to move this around and so forth, you know, how much it went up, how much it went left or right, how much there's a vertical stretch and compression and so forth. Uh, we learned about the standard form and looked and analyzed this a lot as well. Um, here there's no brackets, okay? Um, and then uh, with the factored form, we would change standard to factored form and then we would find the roots, okay? So with the vertex form today, if, you, if I want you to go and find all the x values that work, all you're going to do is you're just going to solve for x, okay? So there's only one x there, so you just move everything off the x uh, using SAMDEP, right? So adding, subtracting, move first, multiply and dividing, move next, exponents, square roots, go after that, and then brackets at the end. All right, so that's how you're going to solve for that one. Standard form, you are going to uh, change this to the factored form and then uh, find the roots. If you cannot factor it though, we learned a new, uh, new tool last day uh, called quadratic formula and you're going to use that instead to get to the answers. Okay, so again if you can get it to factored form then all you do is from your factors that you get here uh, you, you equate them to zero and then you solve for x or whatever the variable is. Okay, so just be careful those ones that are like 2x Plus one, right? So then you got to solve your way out of that to get negative one over two. All right, so these are all the tools that you've learned now. I want you, you now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to throw various uh, questions at you um, that they're quadratic equations and you have to go through and actually find the value of the x or the w or the m uh, that will uh, work in this uh, equation so that it will equal to zero. And then, sorry, it's some other equations here where um, you, it, it will actually equal values and so forth. So you have to find the values of x uh, in that case, okay? All right, so we're going to go through here and then you can uh, practice um, and uh, do the checkpoint. Okay, so the main thing here is I'm throwing everything at you today. So just make sure, be able to figure out which form you have and then you know kind of what uh, process to follow in order to get to the answer. Okay, so we'll start with the first one here. Uh, I'm looking at it and I'm noticing that it's a uh, quadratic um, in standard form, okay? And so, uh, so whenever I see that, uh, I'm going to try to get it to factored form and then um, get to the roots, okay? So let's go through the process of factoring it. So you would always look for the greatest common factor first, okay? And uh, so there's nothing there except a 1. All right, so then the next step is to build your... Um, uh, your uh, sum and product table, product sum table. So uh, again, um, I have uh, a simple trinomial here, so I'm going to try to use that trick as well. So 7, you have to add to 7, but you have to multiply to 4. Okay, so you're trying to think of all the numbers that work here. All right, so uh, 1 and 4, 2 and 2, okay, those are all the numbers that I can think of. Um, that will multiply to make positive 4 for like the negative versions as well, but none of those will add to make 7. So uh, we've tried to find all the factors, nothing works. So uh, again, in the past we always wrote cannot be factored, but now we actually have a tool that we can um, get to the roots with, okay? So we can't get to a factored form, but uh, we could still get to the, um, to the W values that will work here. So what we're going to do here is, again, remember um, you, your standard form is uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. 
So you're trying to get to, um, yeah, you're going to get to the quadratic formula here. So you're going to go A, in this case, is 1, B is 7, and uh, C is 4. Okay, so uh, from here, you're going to use the quadratic formula. So hopefully you have it memorized. So we just jot it down really quick. All right, so here's a quadratic formula. Um, this will help me find x, but in this case here, w is my x. Okay, so that way, um, well, you can't, we could just change it here, I guess. Okay, we'll call this w equals all of this stuff here. Okay, all right, so go through and plug everything in. So respect that negative, leave it there. And let's plug everything in. So we have our b is 7. Okay, so again, it's positive 7. And then we have... Um, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 7 again. I'm just going to write in the other values. a is 1, c is 4, and okay, so, so you have, oops, I, and I forgot the square here. Be careful with that. Okay, so b squared, there's 7 squared, uh, subtract 4 times a times c. Yep, we're good. And all divided by 2a, a is 1. Okay, all right, so you're going to go through and clean that up. Okay, so that's negative 7 plus or minus 49. And subtract the 16 all over 2. We get to 33, all divided by 2, and we can't find a perfect square in here. I think this is simple, as simplified as it can be. So here are my two answers. So the first one is where I take negative 7 and I add it to the square root of 33. Okay, and then the second one is where I take negative 7 and subtract it. I'm going to subtract a, a square root of 33. Okay, so there are my two roots. Um, and yeah, I know we couldn't factor it, but we could still get to the um, the, the x-intercepts. Okay, so we still could find the zeros here um, uh, using the quadratic formula. Okay, so that's what you do. You kind of go through now today attacking each question, making a decision on uh, what, you know, Plan that you need to follow here in order to get to the values, okay? All right, here is another quadratic in standard form. So again, I'm going to look for the greatest common factor. 2, negative 7, and 5. Nothing, just a 1 would go through. There's no x's because 5 doesn't have an x that I can divide out. So let's go to the product sum table. So I need to add to the middle one, which is negative 7. And I need to multiply by the product of, remember, a and c like that. Uh, that's 10. Okay, so this is a complex trinomial. Um, so I'm going to use the decomposition method here. All right, so uh, we're brainstorming right now. 1 and 10 make uh, 10, but it doesn't tweak to make um, 7. So like if I add them or subtract it, it won't make 7. All right, so think of the next two. Uh, 2 and 5, yes, that'll work. Okay, but 2 plus 5 will not make negative 7, so we need negative 2 negative 5, which will multiply to positive 10, but will also add to negative 7. Okay, so we found our uh, how we're going to decompose the middle term. So we have that first term still, and now we're going to write 2x subtract 5x plus 5. Okay, so we're going to decompose the negative 7 here into negative 2 and negative 5. Okay, so from, from there you're going to factor by grouping. So I can divide a 2 and an x out of both of these. And then this one here, I can divide out and see how this one's negative. So I can divide a negative 5, negative 5, no x's though. Okay, and uh, oops, I have too many equal signs here, so I'll get rid of that one because there's one here already. All right, so I'm just going to write the common factor outside, 2x. I'm going to divide these, and I'm left with an x. 
Here's the next one. Divide them right out so it doesn't become zero. It becomes a one, like that. All right, and then this negative five comes out, and then and that leaves uh, an x here, and then a negative one here, okay, equaling to zero. All right, and now that we've uh, factored by grouping here, we see the same factor here. So let's take it one more step and factor this out here. Okay, so uh, we were able to take this uh, equation in standard form and put it in factored form, okay? So it's a lot less work than using the quadratic formula. We can use it, we can still get to the answers this way, but yes, it takes a little bit more work, so I recommend uh, factoring it here, okay? But if you wanted to use a quadratic formula, that's fine. Okay, so, but we still need to get to the roots. So for this one here, this one, again, all you're doing is you're equaling them to zero when you pop them out here like this. Okay, so you're equaling uh, them both to zero, and then this one, this bracket here will solve two, because if you kick the one over, it'll solve to positive one. Okay, this one here, you kick the five over, uh, equals positive five, and then you kick the two over, and then you have five over two. Okay, so then you get your two um, roots here, and you're done because that's what you need to do. You need to solve for uh, the variable, okay? So in this case here, if you plug this number in to the w's here and calculate it out, you'll get zero. For this one here, if you plug in x equals one into here and here, you will get zero, okay? Uh, and then the other option is if you plug this one in, you will also get zero. Okay. All right, and move on to the next ones here. Okay, so uh, again, your goal is to try to find the variables that will work in these equations. Okay, so it's, it's just essentially you're, you're solving. It's just it's looking a lot more complex than the solving that you did last year, but it's just that's all you're doing. You're solving and you're isolating the variable until you can get a value that works, that can be plugged into the equation. Okay, so here, here are some uh, solving type questions that um, you've you've done in the past probably did in grade 9 as well and it's just um, when you come down when it comes down to it it is a quadratic equation okay these are quadratics you have that square there so if you were to plot these you would get a, a parabola graph okay so but in the end though I want you to solve I want you to find the x's that would work so when you find those x's those are the x-intercepts mm -hmm. so let's go through here so um, I'm I'm um, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what form is this? Okay, you're looking at it and it kind of looks like, I guess it kind of looks like the standard form. Okay, it's definitely not the other two because the other two have brackets. Okay, so, um, but uh, in the end, if you can see that there's a really simple way to solve this instead of, you know, using the quadratic formula or factoring and so forth, then I want you to do that. So I'm, I'm seeing here, it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna isolate the, th um, the x here. So I'm gonna boot the three out of here first. Um, and again, um, it's SAM depth, so that's why I'm not going to touch the exponent 2 at the, until the end, okay? So we're going to move the, uh, the 3 out of there, okay? And uh, we're going to divide it over on this side because it was multiplied, okay? And then when we get to here, um, I want you to remember you're in grade 10 now, so when you go to boot this over, Okay, the opposite of squaring something is square root, but remember, it's a positive and negative square root. Okay, so that means I can write this, just like when we uh, write the answer separately with the quadratic formula, there is this calculation to do, a positive, and then there is a negative 16, root 16 calculation to do. So when we calculate those out, one of my answers that will work here is positive 4, and my other answer here is negative four. Okay, so there's two answers here. If I can, if I plug both positive four and negative four into here, square it, and then multiply by th three, I'll get 48. So both of these are possible. So okay, so just remember, every time you take a square root, remember there is a positive and negative root. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do the same over here. So again, um, I'm only seeing one x here. So I guess the kind of a clue here is like, here we had a couple x's, we had a couple w's, so that's why you wanna use factoring or quadratic formula to get to the answer. These ones here only have one x, right? One x involved. So you just, just think right away, oh, that's just, I can just solve that. So just go and do that 
instead of trying to, I don't know, foil this out and then get it to standard form and then solve it and so forth, okay? And if you ended up doing that, that's fine. You'll still get to the answer. All right, so um, I'm only seeing one X here, so I'm going to just start booting everything off the X. So again, you're following Sam Deb. Okay, so that's bed mass backwards. So I'm looking for anything added or subtracted onto the X. Well, I'm noticing that this one is uh, subtracted off the X, right? So I want to move that one. But what's the problem with it? It's inside of a bracket. Okay, and where is bra the bracket in Sam Deb? It's at the end. You're going to deal with the bracket at the end. So don't try to rip this one out of there right now that you're not allowed because it's in the bracket. Okay, brackets come last. All right, so then uh, so we see a multiply, so same thing, it's in the bracket, don't touch that, but we see this four that's multiplied up to the outside, so we can move that first. Okay, so we're gonna, it's multiplied by four, we're gonna divide the four here. Okay, and keep writing everything else out. So then we get to nine. All right, so then, you know, the multiply divide is done. So then uh, we're going to look at the exponent here. Now we're going to deal with the exponent. So again, we're going to boot the exponent over. But again, uh, you're in grade nine now. So when you uh, take a square and square root it on the other side, you have to write plus or minus like that. Okay. All right. So then again, you end up with two equations here that you're going to separate. Okay. So the first one is 2x minus 1 equals the positive square root of 9, and the other one is uh, 2x uh, minus 1 equals um, the negative square root of 9. Okay, so, um, and again, if you wanted to here, actually, we could have just square rooted this. Let's do that, actually. To It doesn't matter. It still works in the end. So just, you know, maybe to cut down a step here. We can just take the square root of 9 and just write 3. So it's plus or minus 3. That's what this is equal to. And then we can write it separately. So this one's equal to the positive 3. And this one is equal to the negative 3, like that. Okay, so then, again, you're not done. So keep going and solve it. So boot the 1. Okay, so you add it over here, comes 4, put the 2, okay, and then x is equal to 2. Okay. All right, so we have the one finished. Now let's do the other one. Okay, so um, again, just solving, move the one first. Okay, we're adding it over there. Negative 2, okay, boot that. 2 over negative 2 over 2, and it's equal to negative 1, like that. Okay, so those are your two roots there. You've solved this equation. Okay, so again, so if you have standard form, a couple of, of, um, of variables like that, okay, in the equation, then think, okay, I should factor it. Um, if I can't factor it, then I'll use quadratic formula. Okay, and then here where you only see 1x, you can just kind of solve your way out of there, okay? Instead of like trying to foil this and then doing, yeah, getting a really big answer with lots of X's in it, and then um, you'll eventually get to here, okay? But you'll have to factor it and then maybe use the quadratic formula and it'll take a lot of work. So these ones here where you just see the one, just see the X only once, um, just solve your way out of it, okay? All right, uh, so let's move on to these next ones. Okay, so at this one here, we have uh, an x here and an x there, and you're a little bit concerned, how do I solve that? So what you want to do is move everything over to the same side, okay, and equal the other side to zero. So we have, so we're going to boot this 12 over here, okay, 12x. So when we do that, it'll become negative 12x plus 36, okay? So I just rewrote it so that, because the x is always in the middle, Okay, so it goes x squared, then the x is always in the middle, and then the constant's here. Okay, so I just re uh, rewrote it, so I put it in between. Okay, but the 36 is still positive, the x squared is still positive, but the 12 is now negative. Okay, uh, so then from there, you have a standard form equation. So I'm going to check for a greatest common factor. No. Okay, so then I'm going to add the middle term. 
I need to multiply the outside terms. Okay, so brainstorm right now. If you want to use guess and check and not use this table, that works as well. So I'm thinking 1 and 36. Okay, if you can't think of the numbers, just list them off like this. 2 and 18. No, it won't make 12. 3 and 12. No, it can't make 12. 4 and 9. No, okay. 6 and 6. Yes, okay. So 6 times 6 will make positive 36, but it will not make negative 6. So the other option is to make them both negative. And yes, that will make negative 12. Okay, so, um, and then because this is a simple trinomial here, we don't have to do the decomposition method. We can just go, oh, I found my two answers already. Here they are. Okay, and again, um, if you wanted to use the perfect square trinomial method, remember, you just kind of analyze and go, oh yeah, I can square root that one. All right. Um, I can square root this one, okay, I can square root that one, um, and then when I do that, that's a 6 and that's an x, 6x times 2 is 12, yep, this is a perfect square trinomial, so you would get to your answers like that, okay, so x minus 6, x minus 6. Okay, um, so, but we're not done here, our next step is to find the 0, so we um, can just pop out the opposite sign here, positive 6. Okay, so again, yes, there's two answers. I know they are the same. Um, if you were to look at that on a graph, so I, just, I don't, this isn't accurate, but I'm just trying to show you here. This is what's happening here. So the graph is coming down, it hits at the six, okay, and then it hits it on the way back up again. Okay, so that's why they still consider it to be two zeros here, okay? There are two zeros. Okay. So one's at six and the other one is at six. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one here. Same thing. Let's get it to look like standard form. Okay. And let's see what values of D will work here. All right. So, uh, greatest common factor. Nope. Just uh, one. All right, so we need to add to negative 5, and we need to multiply to 8. Okay, so we have a complex trinomial here. Um, again, so we have uh, 1 and 8, nothing, 2 and 4, no, uh, that's all that will work, will work to make multiply to make 8. So again, here we have an issue of it can't be factored. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to kick in the quadratic formula. Okay, so again, you just have the 1x, just solve it. When you have, uh, a, you know, a couple of x's like this, and you have a standard form in front of you, use um, factored form first, try to see if you can factor it, and then kick in the quadratic formula if you know you can't factor it. Like here, there's no factors that'll work. Okay, so uh, we're trying to find d, so I'm going to go d equals the quadratic formula. Okay, so again, hopefully you practiced this enough the other day that it's just about plugging in the numbers in the correct area um, and then getting to your answer here. Okay, so be careful here. It's a negative, and then you put in a negative 5 for b. And then we have negative 5 squared times 4a is 2, and c is not c, it's 4. Okay, and 2 times 2 for 2a down at the bottom. All right, so let's see if they can do this a little more efficiently. So this becomes positive 5. This becomes 25. And um, I subtract 32 all over 4. Okay. Um, so we're just double checking that. Yep, that's that. Okay, so then look what happens right here. Okay, so see how this ends up being a negative answer. Okay, so we can't have a negative uh, answer inside of a square root. So here we can just stop and just say, oh, okay, this one has no real roots. Okay, so 
If you write no roots, I'll give you the mark, but try to be um, detailed and write real roots, no real roots, okay? Um, again, because later on when you get to grade 11 or 12 at university, um, there are such things as imaginary numbers, and there is actually a way to uh, calculate out um, uh, this, yeah, this issue here, okay? All right, so we'll just stop there and move on to the next one. On to the last couple questions, and uh, yeah, then hopefully that'll be enough practice um, for you to figure out uh, when you're throwing a question that has a quadratic in it, um, yeah, just reaching out what tool to kind of use in order to get to the answer, okay? All right, um, so again, the instructions are solve, solve. So just get comfortable with that. If you ever see that solve, then you know what to do. You need to go and find the x values or the, you know, the w values, the m values, whatever the variables are, whatever is unknown, okay? All right, um, so we are looking at, um, whoops. Okay, so here's uh, this one here now. Um, so we have a standard form equation. I'm just going to go through and look for a greatest common factor here. Um, so what you would do in this case here is um, oops, you would notice that there is a negative in front. We don't want that there, so we're definitely going to take that out. Um, there's no numbers that would work for 3, 5, and 2, um, and there's no x's. So let's take out that negative. So when we do that, take the negative out, or you can just you know write it without the one there, sorry. Um, so we're going to write the negative out here, but it's like a negative one is out there. So we're going to divide this out, we get positive 3, x squared, negative 5x, and then positive 2, like that, okay? Alright, so we got the negative out of there, and um, so then from there, um, um, you can think of it like if you take a, a greatest common factor out now, it's like if you were to solve this, you can get rid of that negative now and get it to look like this. Okay, so that negative just uh, gets cancelled out um, here when you solve for, um, it's like solving I guess, so divide the whatever's multiplied out first and then deal with the brackets next. Okay. All right, so from there, um, now I can use the um, uh, product sum table. Okay, so I'm thinking what adds to negative 5, but um, uh, multiplies to positive 6 here. Okay, so 1 and 6 works. Uh, sorry, uh, 1 and 6 were ordered to make 6, but it won't make 5. Uh, 2 and 3 will work. Okay, so... Um, so we need a positive 6, so if we take positive 2 and positive 3, but we add negative 2 and negative 3, those are our two numbers. Okay, so let's go through, and this is a complex trinomial, so we're going to just use decomposition here. Okay, so we went through, we decomposed the middle term, and now we're going to factor by grouping. And x works for both of those. And here we need a negative 1. Because this is negative here. And no numbers work, no x's are coming out here. Alright, and then rewrite this. So write the greatest common factor x out. And then take this and divide it. We get 3x. Here we get 2, negative, or subtract 2. So we get a negative 1, I'm just going to write the negative 1 there, uh, and then we divide that out, that's positive 3x, and then negative 2 equals 0. Okay, so we're almost there, All right, and then keep going now, 3x, subtract 2 factors out, leaves an x minus 1 behind, all right, and we're almost there, okay, so now let's find our roots. Okay, so this one's nice and easy, just pop out the opposite, this one you're going to take a little more care with equals a zero. Positive two, because when I kick the subtract two over, it becomes positive two. Boot the three over, it becomes uh, two over three. Okay, all right, so we have uh, our two answers here, finally, and uh, yeah, those are the roots. So again, with this one here, we, um, we didn't like the negative here, so we took that out, 
Okay. And then, you know what, if you, um, yeah, so then from there, uh, whenever you take out the greatest common factor, you can, um, you know, divide it away and, uh, you know, make it disappear here. And then you equal it, it's still equal to zero here, and you can solve the rest of the stuff in the bracket. Okay. So even if it was like two, I don't know, x plus five, I'm just making up a, a quadratic here. So if you factor down and got that, so same thing, it's like you boot those, you boot the two over. Okay. So when you do that, 2 divided by 0, right, this becomes 0. So it's the same idea. So even if you had a different value here, um, you could, um, yeah, just cancel it out. Okay, so that's what we did with the negative. Um, again, this method here, if you wanted to use the uh, quadratic formula, it would have worked as well. Just it would have been a lot more writing. Okay, all right, and let's get to the last one here now. Okay, so again, I see something in standard form, so I'm going to always check for a greatest common factor here. Um, I see that a 5 works. Um, okay, so then let's take the 5 out. Okay, and then when we do that, uh, we'll get to um, this factored form. Okay, all right, so uh, then from there, um, if this was confusing where I made the one negative one disappear, um, what I'll do in this one is I'll, I'll leave the five there and I'll show you that it, it doesn't really um, affect what the x intercepts of the zeros will be in the end. Okay. All right. So we're just going to take this part here and factor it. Okay. So we need to add to negative two and we need to multiply to negative one. Okay. So uh, what numbers uh, make one? Well, one and one, okay? Uh, but we need to multiply to um, a negative one, okay? Uh, so that would mean one of them has to be negative, okay? But will we ever add to make two? No. Okay, so that means now we have to uh, use the quadratic formula here, okay? So, um, okay, A in this case is one, B in this case is negative 2 and c is negative 1 here. Okay, so here is our quadratic formula. All right, and then just go through the steps of filling it all in and uh, getting to your answer. Okay, so we have negative 2 here, so respect that negative, leave it there. All right, negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times negative uh, c, all divided by 2a. All right, then go through the steps, clean it up. Okay, that becomes positive 2. This negative 2 times negative 2 makes 4. And then 4 times 1 times negative 1, okay, so that make it, makes it positive 4, all over 2. Okay, and then here is your radical form. I'll let you stop and leave it like that. But um, if you want to practice for next year. Okay, the root of 8 is 4 times 2. Okay, so that makes 4, square root of 4, square root of 2. I can square root the 4, but I can't square root the 2 here, so we'll leave it as 2 root 2. Okay, so let's plug that in. So, sorry, let's just stop here for a sec. Um, I'm okay if you guys just stop and then just you write it like that for grade 10. Here are your two answers. Okay, um, but again, if you want to practice actually reducing the radical, um, so from here to here, um, you're going to write 2 root 2 now for the square root of 8. Okay, um, and then see how all the 2s can cancel out. So that will be like 1 plus root plus or minus root 2. Okay, so all these 2's cancel out, and then this is your final answer, so then you would write it as your first one is when you add the root 2, and the second one is when you subtract the root 2 away. 
okay but again hand grade 10 I'm okay if you just leave it like that okay all right so now that you've um, been throwing lots of different questions here uh, I want you to still practice some and then um, again it's about being able to select the right method to use. So um, if you have lots of uh, variables, right, just get it to standard form and then use factored form. And if it doesn't work, use quadratic formula. Um, if you only have, you know, one variable that's in the equation here, in the whole equation, then don't go through and start foiling. Just just solve it. Just use sound depth, start kicking everything away from the x value. So again, remember, like this was a nice complex one where we had to move the four first. Okay, we didn't touch anything in the bracket. Don't move the one. Move the four first. Then we move the exponent two. Okay, and don't forget plus or minus. And then we're gonna uh, then the brackets can go. Okay, and then we can start hacking away inside the brackets and then get to our final answer. Okay, all right. So just make sure, kind of look over all the questions again. Make sure uh, you picked up all the little details and then practice, 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 and then try the checkpoint.